Clap plugin support is now in Reaper in version 6.71 officially. And even if you don't use this plugin format, you're going to like this update because there are a lot of performance improvements for effects plugins, including bypassing automatically, which saves a ton of CPU for the plugins that support that. Let's check it out. Clap plugin support added. So Clap is a new plugin standard. This is open source created by Bitwig and Yuhi, and it stands for Clever Audio Plugin API. Open source, but that doesn't mean that all the software created with this will be free. Developers can use Clap with closed source products. On the website here, they're listing a bunch of features for musicians from better performance to better organization, better modulation. From what I've seen in the plugins that have VST3 and clap formats, I haven't really seen any difference in you know, the type of modulation you can use or uh, really any features that are missing in one version versus the other. And that's because the plugin companies that are making clap format right now are already like using VST3 to its fullest ability. And they don't want to have plugins missing features in general. Clap is open source, but not all open source licenses are the same. Some require you to share all of your code. And with this one, which is the MIT license, you just have to say that it's using the MIT license. It doesn't have to be free. You don't have to share all of your code. So for the person making things, it's very easy. They can still charge money for it. They can protect their code and yeah. So that's very simple. This is still very early days for Clap support and for developers creating Clap format plugins. There's the Yuhi plugins, there's uh, the Bitwig DAW, now Reaper. Audio Thing is one company that I've seen create Clap plugins, and uh, Tal is another one that is starting to make Clap format plugins. I'll just add in some Clap format plugins here. So in the effects browser, we've got a Clap and a Clap I category here. And then any of these plugins will also appear in the instruments category, or they can be sorted by developer, etc. Same as all the other formats. So I can add in Filter Jam or Tal Reverb 4. These are just a few of the plugins that are available right now. There's not a lot uh, that are both Clap and Universal Binary 2 for Mac OS on an M1 Mac. To me, this looks and feels identical to any VST. It has resizable UI, which works really well. In this particular one, right-clicking, you know, that doesn't do anything. And the various features, that's going to depend on what each company does. So if they want to put in advanced side chaining or advanced modulation, that's still going to be up to the developer. And they probably don't want to have certain features limited to certain formats uh, as much as possible. Audio Things Filter Jam and any of the other audio thing plugins side by side you can't tell the difference like they're identical same right click menus in reaper the only difference i can find is if you click on the plugin routing it'll say clap advanced routing and a very short list of things you can do here and then on the vst3 there's quite a few different things for midi in and out audio input and output all these sorts of things so is that a limitation? Not really sure. Most users don't use this at all. When it comes to things like side chaining and things like that, they're going to give you the features that they want to give you. And then when it comes to CPU load, it's actually pretty similar. Um, so I've got a track here with 10 clap version filter jam, another track here with 10 VST3 filter jams. And the CPU load for these plugins is fluctuating quite a bit uh, with the current settings that I have right here. Pretty comparable. It's about the same one second to the next. Um, there's no real performance benefit using the clap or using the VST3 at this moment with these particular plugins. But we'll talk more about performance later on in the video. It is important that this is an open source standard because um, a company like Steinberg can't take away access to things like VST, which they did. And no one can make a VST2 format plugin anymore. They can only make VST3 or these other formats like Clap. Licensing VST3 may be expensive or complicated. Uh, this is an open source standard. No one's going to be able to take away 
um, your tools, essentially. And so I think that's a really good thing. So from what I can see, clap format plugins work about the same as the VST equivalents right now. Maybe in the future, there's going to be clap exclusive plugins, but I'm not seeing that at this time. It'll be interesting to follow this format over the next few years. Add project setting to auto bypass plugins that report tail length with user defined silence threshold. Add per instance setting to auto bypass plugins. Add compatibility setting to force automatic tail detection. For JS effects, add ext underscore tail underscore size in order to support auto bypass. Update many built in effects to support auto bypass. For replugs, support silence processing optimizations. In the preferences, rendering option to disable auto bypass when using offline render, apply effects, etc. Project Bay, add effects menu to toggle auto bypass. And in the effects browser, there's an option to set a default for auto bypass. All right, so in this project, I've got two tracks one with 10 instances of Filter Jam clap version. Second track has the VST3 version of 10 instances of Filter Jam. In the project settings, which you'll find under File menu and then Project Settings, on the Advanced tab, we have this option, Auto Bypass Effects that report tail length or have auto tail set threshold of minus 100 dB. And you can see that the version, the track with VST3 plugins is now at 0.03 very minimal, and while the clap track is at 1%. So because there's no audio running right now, there's no effects windows open on the screen, there is minimal CPU load. Effectively, these plugins are bypassed, disabled, not taking any CPU. They're ready to use once Reaper starts playing or once you start opening the effects windows and start using them, but they're saving you CPU while idle. In addition to that, if there's no media on the track, it should also be silent and not using any CPU. So it's going to automatically uh, disable the effects when they're not used. This should be a big improvement in CPU usage. In the clap version of this plugin, it's not automatically reporting a tail length or an auto bypass um, time. So we're going to opt into this function by right clicking. Um, I've got all of them selected right now. I'm going to right click on one of them and select auto bypass plugin on silence. So we're opting into this function. And now that drops the CPU load down to about the same as the VST3. It's slightly higher right now because the effects window is open. If I close this effects window, that should drop down even lower. And there we go. So they're about 0 0.002, 0 0.03. Play the project in a section that has no audio. The CPU does not go up. If I go over to a section that does have audio, as expected, it requires some processing power to actually run, and it is using a little less than 1%. How can we improve this further when the, uh, the effects windows are open? Let's go over to the preferences and the audio tab. In here, we have this option, auto bypass effects when set via project or manual setting, even when effects configuration is open. If we enable this, this will further reduce the CPU load of the uh, the clap track here. When I hit apply, the CPU load should drop, and it does. I imagine this might, in some situations, conflict with virtual instruments where they need to hear an input, and maybe this is automatically disabled if the track is uh, input enabled. I don't know yet, but... Um, but yeah, if you want maximum CPU efficiency, you're going to want to use this auto bypass effects even when the effects windows are open. A bunch of the built in JS effects, as well as all of the Reaper plugins, the stock plugins, those are all updated to use this function automatically. In the render settings, there is this option to bypass this function while rendering. So it's like the plugins are online all the time. It's something to experiment with. I would enable this enable this to disable this function if you're having problems with it not checked. Enable to disable, yeah. And then one more thing, in the effects browser, if we right click on here, go to default settings for new instances, we have this option of auto bypass plugin on silence, so we can enable that. And then when you add in that plugin and it's a low output level, like silence, uh, or minus 100 or so, 
um, that should automatically bypass the effect and then reduce its CPU load greatly. Here's an example of what that looks like. So in this section of the project, I have some audio on the track. You can see that the noise function is active. It's doing stuff. But if I jump to a section where uh, there's no audio coming in, let's say here, uh, the UI actually freezes like it's bypassed. So hopefully that doesn't conflict with anything. So your mileage may vary on whether that is the best option for you, for whatever plugin. Um, it's worth experimenting, especially with those CPU hungry plugins. Up next, there's a couple things that are worth mentioning, but not really something I can demonstrate. Media Explorer, greatly improve search speed with large databases. Media Import, ignore numbers that look like sample rates, example 48K, when attempting to interpret tempo from file name. With the Media Explorer databases, this is improving the search time for multiple terabytes of samples. I don't know exactly what they've changed, but they made some improvements. There's some people that had like seven terabytes of samples um, in their databases and yeah, search got faster. Whatever they did, it worked. Effects Browser, improve configuration for hiding duplicate plugins of different types. When hiding duplicates, ignore trailing channel counts. So they made some tweaks to hiding the duplicate plugins. So if we right click anywhere in the, uh, the left column of the Effects Browser or, or go to the Options menu, uh, we have options for duplicates. So we can show all duplicates, Here's an example where I have the audio unit VST and VST3 version of Amplitude. If I set my priority, my first priority, to VST3, then that list will hide the VST and audio unit versions. Now, if I set my first priority to clap, then we'll see all of those there. And so that will fall back onto the second priority. So we'll go to duplicate, second priority, and in this case, if I do AU, then only the AU will show up there. If I set my second priority to VST3, then we'll see the VST3 there. So it's up to you if you want to prioritize using the clap versions and you only want to see the clap version appear in the list, or if you want to prioritize VST3 or VST, that choice is yours and you have all these fallback options up to four priorities well, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to have some links to CLAP-related resources so you can learn more about that, and a link to the playlist where I have all of the uh, update videos going all the way back to Reaper 5.0. There's so many great features in there. And uh, yeah, learn something. This is a fantastic update. Thank you, Kakos, for making this great update. Let me know in the comments how these CPU uh, that's auto bypass function is working for you. Um, I'm curious how this works on really big sessions. Uh, I, I imagine this is making a huge difference. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.